Welcome. Welcome to Unity of Madison on this spring Sunday. My name is Barry Roberts, and I'm here for Reverend Deborah, who is on vacation this week. So she has the week off doing, traveling, and uh, so I'm here. And I'm glad all of you are here. Thank you for being here in person. Thank you online if you're streaming or even if you're watching after the fact. We appreciate you. We uh, love everybody and include everybody in our community that wants to be here. So thank you for wanting to be here. And let's start by singing our opening song. Let's stand if you can. And God is, we are. And next, we will have an opening prayer by our prayer chaplain, Jamie Gaylor. Prayer is a very important part of this ministry and all of Unity and Silent Unity and has been for over 100 years. So we really do believe in the power of prayer and involving everyone in that. So, Jamie. Namaste. Let us pray. Divine Mother, Father God, today we joyfully gather to learn Unity's teaching for self-awareness and personal growth, that we may have our true divine nature revealed to us, finding true, true peace within our hearts. May we bring this peace into our lives and affirm that peace that peace into our community and the whole world. With these profound thoughts of peace, let us say, thank you, God. Thank you. Amen. And now, since we are such sweet spirit souls, it's time for us to greet each other by singing, um, what are we singing here? Thank you for choosing to be here. Thank you for choosing to be here. And greet each other in whatever way you're comfortable. Handshake, hug, namaste. So let's greet each other.
got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. It's time for our weekend update. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'm Debbie Walker, the celebration assistant for today. Um, let's see. Um, I have to get to our announcements page this up. Okay. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. Unity of Madison is an inclusive spiritual community that welcomes people of all faiths and backgrounds. If you would like to know more about Unity of Madison, there are information packets on the back table. If you are online, um, you can request a welcome packet through the website or send an email to the address on the screen. Thank you for joining us today. All right, the new spring book study begins this week. Our book is The Quest for Wholeness by Unity Minister, Reverend Robert Brumet. The book explores what it means to be a spiritual being having a human experience and invites us into the understanding of our personal wholeness as the precursor to planetary transformation. There are Zoom groups on Monday and Tuesday at 11 a.m., a Zoom group on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and an in-person group on Thursday at 7 p.m. Sign up at the table in the foyer and indicate your meeting time preference. Zoom links will be sent. Sign up today. The women's... Um, event team needs input and ideas about a women's retreat for this year. We will be meeting in the sanctuary after church services on April 14th at, on April 14th at 11.30 for a short discussion of ideas. All women are invited to attend and to con contribute ideas. Please join us. The garden team invites you to participate in their spring fundraiser the team is selling clients' gift cards again this year, beginning today and for the next few weeks. Gift cards are being sold in $25 or $50 increments. A table is set up in the foyer to purchase your gift cards. We will sell cards through April, and you can pick up your gift cards on May 5th or after. And if you have questions about joining the garden team with helping with the garden work, we would be delighted to talk to you about that. Also, many thanks to all who led and participated in our Holy Week and Easter services, including the prayer chaplains, Ann Zenner, and our choir. You blessed us all. Thank you. And we are grateful for today's speaker, Barry Roberts, for inspiring us on our quest for wholeness. 
if you would like prayer support, please know that our prayer chaplain, Jamie Gaylor, will be honored to pray with you after the service in the prayer corner, or you can leave a prayer request in the prayer box next to the screen. So I invite you now to join us, join me in our affirmation for unity of Madison. Together, unity of Madison is abundantly blessed. Creative people are drawn to us. Divine ideas flow through us. Financial resources bless us. And with God as our source, we accomplish mighty works together. And now it's time for our daily word. Okay, today's word is divine order. I delight in the glorious colors, fragrances, and arrangements of plants in a garden. I celebrate the imagination, the meticulous planning, and the diligent work that transformed a patch of ground, some seeds, water, and fertilizer into a beautiful, life-filled space. I recognize the role of divine order in the creation of this garden, expressing through everyone who worked to bring it into being. It began as an idea in divine mind. Someone received the idea. Cooperating minds developed a plan. Willing hands prepared soil, planted seeds, then watered and tended the growing plants. My spiritual vision perceives divine order, the eternal dance of mind, idea, and manifestation expressing everywhere. The scripture reading for today is Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. God saw everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And join me now, please, in affirming our daily word affirmation. Together, I see divine order expressing everywhere.
Thank you. And now it's time for our meditation. So I just ask you to get comfortable, release anything in your hands, feet on the ground, close your eyes if you wish, or just gaze ahead. And just breathe. And really feel your breath. Take it in and you release. You feel that loving flow. That we nurture through our breath. And we feel release and relaxation moving throughout our bodies. As we simply breathe and melt into that presence. And in this presence, in this place, we take a few moments to look inside. And today we're talking about wholeness. We are all whole. We are all one. And we are all expressions of love and Christ's spirit. Feeling whole may feel like going home. It may feel the comfort of home and whatever that home means to you. Think about where you feel most at home, now or in the past or in the future. And it could be a house, it could be a, a forest, it could be anything that you really feel have felt at home and at peace. So imagine yourself in your home, in your home space, space of consciousness, and just relax and enjoy this feeling of being home being whole and knowing you are love. Cherish this feeling. anchor to this feeling of the warmth of our hearts at home. Feel the joy of being one in spirit. where we know peace, we know love, we know joy. Now see yourself starting to glow as you are in this comfort zone and in this peaceful zone. Just feel your body glowing with the energy and see yourself glowing with all this beautiful energy swirling working enlivening you
and with a big smile on your face. See this energy and this light expanding out from you, going out further and further, and you see it flowing into our community. And throughout the whole world, our light grows to bring the whole world home with us, whole with us, one with us. We know this truth is possible. We know this truth is here and it's ours to accept and to grow and to share. So let us just take a moment in the silence to feel this blessing in us and spreading out into the world. And as we return to this time and place, remember your home and your wholeness is here now, always. And it's a blessing that you can access at any time for any reason to feel whole and at peace again. And for this great blessing that we share together, we are grateful. Amen. And next, we'll sing our new Lord's Prayer.
water know and you will see God is the tree and we are the branches through eternity Thank you, Pete. That was beautiful, as always. Appreciate that. So good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone out there today. Hope everyone's feeling whole. I'll just start off by saying I had my own little fragmentation accident this morning. I cut myself shaving. <laughs> and it took quite a while to stop the bleeding and get it to be manageable, so I just made it. So you always have these little challenges, you know? It's like, really? <laughs> First thing I wanted to do is uh, just give you a little background on where this whole topic of wholeness comes from. So one of the things, when Reverend Richard was here a little over a year ago, uh, he recommended this book to me, just individually in our conversations, The Quest for Wholeness by Robert Brummett. And, um, and then and I got it. I read a little bit, but I didn't really study it then. But then later in the year, I started this program at Unity, um, which is a two-year spiritual direction program. In any case, Guess one of the books that we had in our first quarter, A Quest for Wholeness. And then Debbie and myself and Reverend Deborah met uh, in January when uh, she was starting, and we came up with a plan for adult education, and we have copies of those out there, and many of you have had it. And what is the theme for the year? Wholeness. Because Reverend Deborah, when, when I suggested this as a book for the book group, she goes, well, why don't we make that the theme for the year? Huh. And then I was online, and Martin, uh, can you bring up our slide? Look at this slide. This is our June annual convention at Unity Village, where all the ministers and, and everyone goes. And I saw this, and I was like, OK. The mystical journey of wholeness is the theme. <laughs> and also, another book in my spiritual direction class, A Hidden Wholeness by Parker Palmer. So, for whatever reason, and I don't exactly know why, but for whatever reason, we seem to be in the flow <laughs> of a quest for wholeness, and it's not just here. And I want to point that out, too, because I think it's important for all of us to understand we're part of a bigger community and part of 
growing consciousness and by seeing these things and how all these things fit together, because none of us knew any of this. It wasn't planned. It all is coming together energetically. Okay? So we are part of something bigger than just ourselves here in, in Madison, and that's great. So that's where the theme comes from. Now, the first thing is wholeness. What the heck is wholeness? You know, that's, that's one of the things that's hard to define, so to speak. You know, it's one of those, I don't know about you, but it seems to me it's just hard to get your head around. And in the book, uh, Robert Brummett says, an all-encompassing definition of wholeness eludes us because wholeness itself is a divine idea. We can never totally define a divine idea, at least not in language, I would add. All right? So we try and make these things into our human language so that we create some understanding. Um, but it's really hard sometimes. And he goes on and says, love may be impossible to define, but we know it when we experience it. Okay? The same is true with wholeness. We can fully know wholeness only through our experience of it. So that's one of the things. It's an experiential piece. Uh, spiritually, metaphysically, Charles Fillmore wrote in Revealing Word, wholeness, the perfect unification and expression of humans as spirit, soul, and body. True healing means to make whole. True healing means to make whole. So that's, a, that's another theme that's in the book, too, and you can consider thinking about is wholeness is spiritual healing. We, we spiritually heal by achieving wholeness and that state. Okay. So in the book, uh, Robert Brummett lays out a number of things, four key aspects of wholeness. So one is self-awareness. So one of the things that we need to do is to uh, take a look at ourselves, of our lives inside and out, and how we're behaving, but also how we're thinking, how we're feeling. Where are these emotions coming from? Okay. And one of the ways of doing that is in meditation which we use a lot here at Unity. It's also uh, consistent with other things, like we had another book group recently by Michael Singer, uh, Living Untethered, and he talks about the observer self. Well, that's self-awareness also. So we, part of growth is being able to look at ourselves and look at what we're doing and deciding if it's helping us or do we want to change it and shift it. And that comes through our self awareness. He also says that wholeness implies a balance of our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual natures, as well as not only our external lives, but our internal lives, to balance the external and the internal. Okay. Easier said than done sometimes, but um, you know, with everyone's schedules and all these things we're trying to balance. But part of it is, is where do we put our priorities, okay? The balancing is our choice. No one's, you know, quote, making us run our lives the way we run our lives. We choose that. So the idea is to choose to look inside and really develop our inner spiritual resources, which will then be expressed out in the world through us. And to have that balance, because we can't ignore completely the outer physical. I could, if I ignored my cut today, I'd be bleeding all over the place. You know, I can't do that. I'm going to attend to that in a physical way, okay? And that's fine, and everyone ought to do that too. And at the same time, balance it with the inner work. Too. We got to do the physical work, but a lot of times we just get caught up in all the physical work and just doing these things and doing what's on our schedule and all of that without 
balancing it and taking the time to look inside. Another term to describe uh, wholeness aspect is integrated. And he says, wholeness implies a state in which we are at one with ourselves, not fractured, not fragmented, or internally conflicted. Okay. So to be whole is to be integrated in integrity with oneself. Okay. So if we're out of integrity with ourselves, then something is not feeling good. So if we do something that isn't, if we do something physically that maybe isn't in flow with us spiritually and internally, there's going to be that tension, that conflict, okay? And a lot of times that causes stress, anxiety, depression, all kinds of things. And what we need to do to be whole is to integrate, not to ignore it, not to push it away, not to, not to just, you know, delude ourselves that it isn't happening, but to work with it, to bring it in and understand what is it saying to us? Why is it here? I've recently started myself just saying, uh, when I have emotions or feelings or something come up that isn't pleasant or that I don't want in my life, I go, where is that coming from? You know, where in me is that coming from? Because I'm bringing this emotion to the situation or to the idea. Nobody else is. I am. So what in me needs some work or needs to look at? And that's the integration. We want to bring it together because it's trying to help us. Okay? These things are trying to help us. They're like, like pain, physical pain shows you, you, you know, you cut yourself. <laughs> um, so you have that. It's an indicator. So our emotions and other things are indicators of what's going on inside us. And if we're not happy with that, or we feel we could be you know, more in presence, then that's our choice to integrate it and bring it together by looking at it. And that goes back to that self-awareness piece too. Not to ignore it, but to really work with it and understand it. And then he goes on, self-actualization. Um, Self-actualized people live life from the inside out and have a high degree of openness to new experiences. To be whole is to be self-actuated, to be fully functioning as a human spiritual being. Okay. So actually, self-actualization is something that with Abraham Maslow and the hierarchy of needs and the top after you get your basic needs of fulfilled is self-actualization. And again, the theme here is what do we need to work on inside? What do we need to do inside to bring ourselves into wholeness? Okay. And when we are in wholeness, you know, we don't have fear. And we don't have the anxiety because there's nothing to be afraid of. We're all whole. We're all together. We're all one. And how could I be afraid of that? Okay. And what does it look like? Well, what does it look like? I don't know if you've heard, many of you probably had, you know, the, the story, the little story with Buddha when he was enlightened and um, he's walking and someone says, my friend, what are you? Are you a celestial being or God? No, said the Buddha. Well then, are you some kind of magician or wizard? No. <laughs> well, my friend, well then what are you? The Buddha replied, I am awake. Okay? Awake. That means we are awake. Self-awareness, balance, integration, self-acquisition actualization, bringing all of that a hundred, a thousand percent, we become awake. And then we can go on and do the good works that we are here to do. We all have skills, we all have interests, we all have different things that we can contribute. And 
So, we, but we come from the wholeness versus the fragmentation and the fear and the stress. That's a self-actualized state. And a couple other thoughts on wholeness. Um, it's evolutionary organic. So wholeness is, and I'm talking about with people too, but it's beyond that. It's with Mother Earth, it's with the environment, it's with the sky, it's with space, it's in the whole universe that we are one and whole with. And we can help bring that healing anywhere, everywhere that we have our consciousness. And then lastly, and this is so true about a lot of spiritual keys, wholeness is a paradox. Okay. It's the object of our quest, in other words, something we're searching for and, and trying to achieve, yet wholeness is our ever-present birthright. So it's here. God has provided wholeness for us. Spirit is here. We are whole. It's our job to accept it and to realize it and to live it out in the world. Okay. No one's holding back. Spirit doesn't hold anything back. Spirit is here all the time do, giving everything possible to us that we can accept. So our job is to learn how to accept it and to work with it and to bring it out. So how do we do that? That's the thing that always kind of trips me up sometimes. But in Unity, we like practical things, too. So the question is, all this sounds great, right? Who's going to argue against that? No, OK. Well, someone might. But there are people that might. But um, so how do we get there? So on the next slide, there's a picture. And don't worry, you can't read the details on the picture, but just get the image. And what this is, is something I learned about last year, the tree of contemplative practices. And each branch of the tree is a category, and those are the categories listed over there. And then within each category, there's a number of practices that we can do. And there's a total of 31 practices in this tree. And so it starts with stillness, and that's down at the bottom left. And things like silence, centering, meditation, quieting the mind. Okay, We have had some of that here today. Uh, the next branch is generative, and that's gratitude, loving kindness, meditation, uh, beholding, uh, visualization. And then we have creative is the next branch. Music, singing, improvisation, contemplative arts, journaling. Then we have active. Pilgrimage to areas in social justice issues, activism, volunteering, vigils, marches, bearing witness. Then we move to deep, uh, to relational, deep listening, council circle, storytelling, dialogue, and then movement, walking meditation, labyrinth, yoga, aikido, qigong, dance, and we have our labyrinth out here, so we can walk that. And then uh, ritual, cyclical, establishing a sacred space, personal space, retreats, ceremonies. So you could say that we're here right now doing it as a ceremony, as a ritual. So right here in this hour, hour, 15 minutes, we're doing numerous of these things. That's what we teach in Unity, is we have to take it home and make it our own. And then we may get results, we may not. I mean, we will get results, there's no question about that. They may not be the results we thought we were gonna get, but we will get results. And I oftentimes have used uh, Myrtle Fillmore as an example, our co-founder Myrtle and Charles Fillmore, um, because really the Unity Movement and her and Charles' experience started with healing. And there's great descriptions, about two pages of descriptions of some of the things that she did. In, it took her like two years of meditating and, it, and doing prayer work and meditating, affirmations, all these things. And uh, it didn't always 
it didn't start right away. Her healing didn't start right away, but she had the belief, the discipline, and the strength to keep working at it. And I just wanted to share a little bit of one of the things that she did that helps you think of how can I bring this in wholeness into my body and into my life. And Myrtle says, I went to all the life centers in my body and spoke words of truth to them, words of strength and power. I asked their forgiveness for the foolish, ignorant course that I had pursued in the past when I had condemned them, called them weak, inefficient, and diseased. I did not become discouraged at their being slow to wake up, but kept right on, both silently and aloud, declaring the words of truth until the organs responded. And neither did I forget to tell them that they were free, unlimited spirits. I told them that they were no longer in bondage to the carnal mind, that they were not corruptible flesh, but centers of life and energy omnipresent. So Myrtle, part of her healing practice, and she went on and taught this to other people, and that's how unity started, and then they started a prayer circle and so on and so forth. Um, you know, one of the things she actually did was talk to her body. And the background with that, too, is she was... She had tuberculosis in those days and was told it was inherited and that she was going to be passing pretty soon. She was pretty weak and frail at this point. And she had total recovery over time, and her and her husband Charles started the unity movement. But she had to do something. We have to do something. Okay? What do we need to do to be whole and to find that wholeness? Well... There's things out there like this tree of practices because you need to find it. No one's going to give it to you, teach you how to get wholeness. You've got to experience it. And that's something that's really important is the direct experience with spirit. And that's what we teach and that's what we want you to have and to explore it in every day. And the last kind of summary thing about wholeness I'd like to say is that when I'm in wholeness and, and love, or you are, anyone is, we, we, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not afraid. And there's a lot of stuff out in the world these days, right, that we see, and it can be very disturbing, and it's whatever you want to call it. But after thinking about this, too, one of the things is I'm not going to give in to fear. So things are happening in the world. That's true. What I make of it is what I make of it. What you make of it is what you make of it and what we all. But one thing is, is people, some of the people doing the destructive things that we see in the world, they want us to be afraid. They, they're trying to instill fear. I'm not going to give in to that. I'm staying with love and wholeness and unity. And if I find myself getting afraid, then I start to look at, where is that coming from? How is that triggering me? What do I need to shift? So I'm not accepting the fear that's out there. I'm seeing the wholeness and the love and the oneness that we are. So in closing, I have a couple affirmations here that I'd like us to use. Uh, Martin, could you bring those up? So let's affirm these and give it 100%. Now, it may not be verbally, but 100% inside of you, in your heart, in your mind. Let's affirm these together. I am a child of God. Perfect wholeness is my birthright. I am awakening to the realization of my wholeness. I am whole right now. And I encourage all of us to take that and share that and, and be the blessing for yourselves, for our community, and for our world going forward. Namaste. Namaste.
Let's see if we can experience some wholeness right now through the vibrations of the Rav Vast. Thank you, Pete. It's beautiful. Okay. Now is our time for collecting our tithes and offerings. And I invite you to hold them in your hands or over your heart um, as we affirm together the offertory blessing. The divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. The ushers would come forward, please. And... Blessed and multiplied. 
and all that I receive is blessed and multiplied by divine love. Divine love flows through me. Thank you. The ushers would come forward, please, so we can bless our offerings. Together now, we are grateful for these tithes and offerings. We bless them and send them forth to do their great and mighty works. Amen. Let's follow this now with our um, youth prayer. We now open our hearts to the children and families seeking a welcoming spiritual community filled with light and love, and so it is. Amen. Okay. We got kids today, I think. <laughs> Today in the youth family ministry, we talked about family and how we express caring to our family and how they express it to us. And we talked about different families like our home family, our extended family, our church family, and our school family. Um, and the kids drew a picture of their family and how they express caring to them. Did, does anyone want to? I'm Samir, and I expressed uh, my family for showing love and care. Is there anyone else? Oh, okay, that's all right. <laughs> well, let's now bless our youth admin ministry. Oh, oh. oh, you want to show? Okay. Uh, I made a fan. Do you want me to hold these up for you? And I made my family, and I made hearts too, so that I love everything in my life, life that I see. Oh. But I'm not done with uh, the fan yet. That's lovely. Thank you. Well, let's join together now to bless our youth ministry here. Please join me in the youth ed blessing. We love you, we praise you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ you are. Amen. Okay. And I I think if you'd like to go join who you came in with today, um, we now have birthday time. It's the first Sunday of April, so...
Anybody here have a birthday in April? Hey, we got a sister. Happy birthday. with um, the um, <clears throat> peace song. I invite you all to stand and join hands. begin with each one of us and we go forth affirming our prayer for protection the light of God surrounds us I am light the love of God enfolds us I am love the power of God protects us I am power the presence of God watches over us I am presence wherever we are God is, and all is well. Amen. Amen. <laughs>